Hello. This segment is going to be about interfacial tension. So why, if we're talking about uh, flow and pause media, are we interested in interfacial tension? Well, the reason is we're going to be looking at flow underground and specifically we're going to be looking at multi-phase flow, that is multiple fluid phases. So this could be carbon dioxide and water or oil and gas or oil and water. So in those cases, we have multiple phases and there will be an interface at the pore scale between those two phases. And associated with that interface, for reasons we're just about to, to explain, there will be an energy. And the interfacial tension is the energy per unit area of this interface. And there will be a lot of interfaces underground. But before I go any further, I'm gonna show you uh, this book um, and uh, maybe a better picture of it I can show on a slide here. So this is a book, Multiphase Flow and Porous Media, a Pore Scale Perspective, that was published by Cambridge University Press last year, 2017. You can see the DOI for that. In much of what follows, both in this segment, but in the other videos that I'm making, I will take concepts and diagrams from this book. I'm not going to follow the book slavishly, but it may be a resource that many of you would find useful. So now, Indeed, here is a diagram from, from the book, in fact, the very first diagram showing the concept of interfacial tension. So here is an example of water and air on a solid surface. As you know, in free space, the water would tend to form a spherical droplet because actually that's what minimizes the surface area for a given volume. And because there is an energy associated with an interface, you want to minimize that interfacial area. When the water hits the surface, there is also an interaction with the solid. In fact, there is an interfacial tension between the water and the solid and the air in the solid. And now we have a, another energy balance, which will lead to there being a distinct angle, this theta contact angle, between the solid and the fluid. And again, we will talk about that later. So let's talk about what interfacial tension is why you see interfacial tension is because when you create an interface you break bonds so here's an example a schematic showing uh, water and oil and the little cartoons there represent the molecules themselves and as you probably know water has hydrogen bonding reasonably strong bonding that's why it's quite a dense liquid when you create a, an interface of water you have destroyed about half of that hydrogen bond Similarly with the oil, when you create an interface with the oil, you've destroyed the, principally the van der Waals forces between the oil molecules. But of course, then you can have van der Waals forces between the oil and the water, but you can't have hydrogen bonding between the oil and the water. So there's an energy associated with that surface. It's energetically unfavorable to create that surface. Now, let's talk about some things. Uh, the first one is the words interfacial tension and surface tension. You often hear people talk about surface tension. Nothing wrong with surface tension, but surface tension is specifically the energy between a substance and its vapor. Essentially, it's vapor in a vacuum. Okay. So that's fine in physical chemistry. It's well defined, but it's the energy associated with an interface between two phases of the same substance. We're interested in distinctly different fluids underground, oil and water, CO2 and water, and so on and so forth. So there it's an interfacial tension. It's between two different phases, two phases of different compositions. Now let's talk about the units. It's an energy per unit area, so it's joules per square meter. As we're going to show later, physically, this represents a tension in the sense that the, the interface wants to contract so it can be viewed as a tension, which will be in newtons per meter, a tension per unit length. It's the same, same unit, essentially. It's often given the symbol sigma. Just one thing before we go on. This is about the science of flow and pause media. It's not about I have an application and I happen to look at the science. And the problem with many of the applications, particularly petroleum engineering, is the use of rather unfortunate units. Joules per square meter or newtons per meter is an SI unit. Just stick to it. Don't consider using any other type of unit. 
Now, let's look at some representative values. These are not the precise values. In fact, deliberately, they're not the precise values. If you want to know the exact value, you can Google it. It's not a, it's not a mystery. Um, but air and water is about 70 millinewtons per meter. Oil and water is about 50, and air and oil is about 20. Now, those numbers actually have a physical meaning, particularly between air and oil. What you've done essentially with the oil is you've broken about half of the van der Waals bonding. Um, there's very little interaction with the air. And so the energy there is about kT, because that's essentially the strength of the um, van der Waals interaction. It's essentially the, the energy of each molecule. So it's around kT per molecule. And you can, you can do that calculation. It's not precise, but it gives you an order of magnitude. Obviously, the interfacial tensions uh, involving water, because you're breaking hydrogen bonding, are going to be, be larger. OK, that's at ambient conditions, that by, by which I mean room temperatures and pressures. At reservoir conditions, which is an oil reservoir, um, maybe a couple of kilometres underground at high pressures, but also high temperatures, um, these interfacial tensions are typically about half. So oil water is about 20 million meters per meter. Now, one of the things you notice there is that the air water interfacial tension, which is about 70 million meters per meter, is almost exactly the oil water plus the gas oil interfacial tensions. Now, that isn't some random coincidence because of the numbers. There is a physical reason for that. So that's what we're going to talk about now. Why are those interfacial tensions the same? So here we have um, the three. I'm just going to go through a little slideshow to show that. So when you have air water, right, which is the first one, what you've done is you've broken half of the hydrogen bonding. Okay, there's virtually no interaction between the air and the water. It's, it's very similar to it would be. Okay, so that's a high energy. We know about that. Now let's talk about the oil water interfacial tension. What you've done here is you've broken the hydrogen bonding, but you've added in with the oil the van der Waals forces. There is some interaction between the oil and water molecules. So it's less energetically favorable. In fact, the, the interfacial tension will be lowered by the degree of that um, van der Waals forces. Now let's look at air oil. Well, air oil is you've broken the van der Waals forces. So in fact, if you look at the oil water and the air oil, the oil water is, let's break the hydrogen bonding and the van der Waals forces, so that's good, it gives you a lower interfacial tension, plus the air oil where you've broken the van der Waals forces, that's bad, so the van der Waals forces cancel out and then it equals to the air water. So in fact, this isn't a coincidence, it's not exactly equal, right? it's a rather simplistic argument, um, but it's almost equal, and this actually has some consequences, specifically um, for three-phase flow. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say briefly about interfacial tension. Then we're actually going to look a little bit more about contact angle and how the fluids are arranged in the pore space. Okay, so I can stop there. Um, thank you very much.